This is the seventh book in the House of Night series by PC and Kristen Cast. Although we do not post intentional spoilers in our reviews, the following review and synopsis may contain what could be considered spoilers, so we do not recommend watching this video unless you have read Marked, Betrayed, Chosen, Untamed, Hunted, and Tempted by PC and Kristen Cast. Things have turned black at the House of Night. Zoe Redbird's soul has shattered, with everything she stood for falling apart and a broken heart making her want to stay in the other world forever, Zoe is fading fast. It's seeming more and more doubtful that she will be able to pull herself back together in time to rejoin her friends and set the world to rights. As the only living person who can reach her, Stark must find a way to get to her. But how? He will have to die to do so, the Vampire High Court stipulates. And then Zoe will give up for sure. There are only seven days left. Enter BFF Stevie Ray. She wants to help Z, but she has massive problems of her own. The rogue red fledglings are acting up, and this time not even Stevie Ray can protect them from the consequences. Her kind of boyfriend Dallas is sweet, but too nosy for his own good. The truth is, Stevie Ray is hiding a secret that might be the key to getting Zoe home, but it also threatens to explode her whole world. In the middle of the whole mess is Aphrodite, ex-fledgling, trust fund baby, total hag from hell, and proud of it. She's always been blessed, if you could call it that with visions that will reveal the future. But now it seems that Nyx has decided to speak through her with her goddess's own voice, whether Aphrodite wants it or not. Aphrodite's loyalty can swing a lot of different ways, but right now Zoe's fate hangs in the balance. Three girls playing with fire. If they don't watch out, everyone will get burned. Hi guys, this is Jessie with Chapter Chicks. I am here with a book review for you today over PC and Kristen Cast Burn. I know you guys probably can't see that really well. I'm doing this video at night, so all I have is that overhead light, and it's not very good. But, yeah, so I'm doing this book review over PC and Kristen Kath Burned, and this book was released April 27th of 2010 by St. Martin's Griffin, St. St. Martin's Griffin, and it is the seventh book in the House of Night series. There are 323 pages. So as I said before, definitely, definitely, definitely do not keep watching if you haven't read the first of the, or the other books, the first six books, because I don't want to spoil you guys. I don't want to take a chance of spoiling you guys. So, yeah. But basically, this is probably one of my favorite series, just because it is a lot different than anything else or a lot of other things that I've read. And it's a pretty good story. Like... I'm really interested when I read it about the things that are going to happen and the things that are happening. So yeah, that's pretty cool. <sighs> Sorry, it's been a very long day today. But the plot is really good in this book. It, like all of the other books follow this kind of similar plot. And like, the first three books followed a completely different plot than the rest of the books. And then it kind of started going downhill, so they switched the plot, I guess. And now it is way different than anything else, or the rest of the beginning of the series. And even that part of the series started to get old after the same thing over and over again. Because basically what would happen is Zoe and her gang would come across all kinds of different struggles, and they would just overcome them joyfully. And that's not real life. And if, like, the bad guy would be like, oh, I'll see you again another day, and ride off into the sunset or something like that. And that's not really how it goes. So it's kind of, like, tedious to see them doing that over and over again. But in this book, she went a different way, but she still kind of kept the same plot line, which I really, really liked, because it's still going on about the same thing, but it's something different. It's not, hey, we have to defeat this guy, all this stuff happens. Oh darn it, this stuff happened too. Oh, but wait, we can still do it because we're all friends. So, it's good that it wasn't like that. But, the one thing I cannot stand about these books is that the dialogue is ridiculous. And if you've ever read a House of Night novel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it hasn't got any better, guys, by book seven. It's not any better. But, Basically, it's really immature and unrealistic 
because they say things that normal teenagers wouldn't say and they say things that like Aphrodite cusses like a freaking sailor she says a cuss word like every five words and I don't like cussing in general to begin with I'm not really a big cusser just because I think it makes you look like it makes you like feel down about yourself because if like you're feeling the need to cuss then it's just got it's just bad language it's inappropriate language and I don't, I don't know I just don't like it I just don't like when people cuss and it doesn't really bother me when people around me cuss it just bothers me like I don't know but she cusses to authority figures like huge like a queen she goes up and she's like mm, girl cussing 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 this and I'm like no way that would never happen. And another, like, crazy unrealistic thing about it is the adults don't even care. They're just like, oh, that's so charming. And no, that's not. Cussing is fighting words to me. And it just doesn't seem very realistic. And, of course, then there's, like, I, I, it shows personality for all the characters. And I guess that's why PC and Kristen casted it that way. Because I could tell you exactly what kind of stuff that the characters like out of this now. But it also shows a lot of immaturity because they'll be talking to big, huge authority figures about something really, really important. And they'll be like, oh, so it's kind of like good and evil or like good shoes and bad shoes. And I don't know if they actually use that example, but it's like really stupid stuff that you wouldn't actually say. And so that kind of ruins the series for me just because the dialogue is really immature. But it's... It, it's still one of my favorite series, don't get me wrong. It, just, it doesn't really ruin the series. It just makes them not as good in my eyes. That's why it got an average rating, even though the plotline was so great, because the immaturity of the dialogue was just so bad in this one. But I, I hope... I really hope Awakened isn't going to be like that, just because of the change in the characters. But this is a pretty decent-sized book. It's about that thick. The words are fairly tiny you guys can see and so yeah but definitely check out the series if you haven't um if you're 15 and older I would say only though because Mark does have some mature content and so do some of the other books so if you're 15 and over I would definitely recommend checking out the House of Night series because they are very good books they're, ver they're worth your while like I wouldn't rush to read them all because it's a guaranteed like because it's just so easy to read, but then it also has this like complexity that makes them good books too. So definitely check them out and see if they are for you. That's really all I have to say about this book. Um, once again, I'm sorry about the lighting. I'll try to do my books or my review during the day. We've just had a really long day and stay at the house, so yeah. So this is my I'm Jessica Skelly with Chapter Chicks. And this is my review over Burns by PC and Kristen Cast. And this chapter was for you. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.